Um, my name is Claudia Kawas. I'm a neurologist and I'm interested in aging and dementia, and in particular, the oldest old, people over the age of 90. And we have social security at age 65 because for the most part, when it was established, people didn't live past 65. We've added 28 years to life expectancy in the last century. People over 90 are the fastest growing segment of the population and they're gonna quadruple over the next couple of decades. The oldest old have a whole lot to teach us <laughs> in so many domains. I mean, this is a multidisciplinary study. We think about their attitudes, their activities, their diets. Um, we check their memories, their gait, all sorts of, of things. But I think one of the things that stunned people the most is to the realization that probably about 40% of individuals in this age group who die without dementia, in fact, have significant amounts of disease in their brain, including Alzheimer's disease, and yet they seem to be relatively fine. If we can figure out why they're not expressing dementia, then I think we can get strategies that'll help all of us and at younger ages. Some of the first studies we did were in longevity. Um, we had originally 14,000 people who had told us a lot about their lifestyle in 1981. And in 2003, if they were over the age of 90, um, we wanted to understand how their experience had been. It turns out that individuals who exercise live longer. Individuals who do activities that are non-exercise live longer than people who don't. For every hour that individuals were engaging in cognitive or social activities, they had a benefit for longevity. Um, it turns out that positive attitude, you live longer. It turns out that taking supplements like vitamin C, E, and A was not associated with longer life, however. We think diet is important, but the supplements didn't appear to have an effect. But my favorite parts of this research has been the autopsy studies um, that we have done. We did many of our autopsy studies in collaboration with the University of Pennsylvania, um, Dr. Trojanowski and, and Lee. And the brains have had some of the biggest surprises. So at this point, we have about 450 individuals who have given us their brains. Um, we have another 150 individuals who have promised um, to join that study. Um, and I think that what we're finding in their brains is telling us a lot about brain health at all ages and is some of the richest material that we have. I think one of the most striking things that I've noticed is how these individuals have had a sense of purpose throughout all phases of their lives. And that continues right up to when we see them. In their ninth and 10th decades, they are volunteering for this incredibly strenuous research. The desire to make the world a better place and leave a legacy has been so striking.